Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Michal Schorm. I uh, work at uh, Red Hat as a software engineer. I'm a package maintainer for Fedora and RHEL, and I uh, pack MariaDB and MySQL dat databases. Uh, today, uh, here I will be talking about uh, installing Fedora from scratch uh, when you can't use, for example, Anaconda for any reason. You can try uh, this one. Uh, uh, I will cover uh, basic steps that you need to install uh, basically any operating system. You can install uh, very, very similarly any other Linux and, uh, and some others. Uh, I started that, uh, my project because uh, I wasn't able to use uh, Anaconda installer, which is a uh, default installer for Fedora uh, at the time. Uh, I found out uh, it was uh, really difficult to use Anaconda on older hardware and on, on some not so common hardware. Uh, nowadays, it's, uh, I don't know, three, four years later, the situation is much better and uh, I haven't found a device the Anaconda won't work on uh, for a while. So it might not be needed uh, anymore, but uh, anyway, it's a nice overview of what you actually need to do to get the system running. Uh, in the meanwhile, I found a uh, quite number of uh, smaller or big issues uh, from uh, some minor re reports in the uh, DNF installations to situations like the uh, uh, specific versions of kernel and system D won't work together and the you know, whole system will crash. So uh, I, I work on the uh, installer scripts for about a year. Uh, there was a uh, long times in between when uh, I, f I am at a blocker box that uh, I had to resolve first with the people who were maintaining the components. So it was quite a long run to create the working installer. Uh, as I already said, nowadays uh, uh, the Anaconda works pretty well. Uh, the uh, one drawback may be that uh, if it crash uh, and if you don't uh, know Python or you don't want to dig uh, uh, deep into it uh, without a, uh, good knowledge what that uh, error, uh, what that Python error message means, it might be difficult to troubleshoot anything. And since uh, we are talking about uh, an uh, installation, uh, you might uh, get into a situation you don't know what to do next because you haven't had a running system. So uh, uh, there's not much what you can do. Uh, yeah, some other distributions like uh, Arch Linux, Gen2, and so on are uh, installed this, uh, this way. Uh, usually, so I, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, discovering anything new, really. I just try to get the same things working on Fedora. So uh, the hardware I use that on primarily is uh, this cute single board computer. It's called uh, Udu, and uh, uh, for me specifically, it's cool because it has uh, it, it have uh, Intel processor inside. Uh, I had uh, issues with uh, ARM on Fedora years uh, back, so that really helped me to get an, uh, everything working. Uh, you can check it out on uh, UDU.org. They do a uh, load of r really cool boards like this. Uh, what you will need is uh, to get uh, the Fedora installer USB or something similar. Uh, what we need to do is uh, to run Bash and uh, to be able to install the packages, so run RPM DNF on some, or something similar. Uh, and my install scripts, you can uh, find them on GitHub. There will be also a link at the end of the presentation. So uh, the, there's, uh, uh, this is how it looks in the uh, folder. I can show it on the device. There are uh, 
only quite a few scripts. I have uh, two configurations uh, files so where I set everything I need from the uh, uh, how uh, the device uh, should be partitioned, what partitions should be there, and uh, which operating system, which version, what packages should be there, and so on. Uh, Well, and I will just uh, leave it working. It will install a lot of packages, uh, so we will get to that later. Okay, uh, I will now uh, try to go through the uh, steps you need to make and try to uh, point out some uh, pitfalls or um, some uh, difficult parts you need to uh, understand to uh, get your system working. First, uh, you need to partition your disk, uh, which may be easy if you have only uh, one way uh, how to do, and do that. Uh, but on the uh, new device, you can find uh, that there can be some uh, the, uh, um, the layout uh, may be um, Bioson or uh, GPT, and the partitions can be uh, different based on that. Uh, you may find out that you uh, can use uh, mm, several combinations of, uh, for example, the uh, uh, MBR, uh, MBR partitioning standard on the, uh, uh, on the uh, GPT partition disk. Uh, but uh, you will need some uh, additional uh, partitions which uh, must be uh, formatted or uh, partitioned in specific way and most of them have some uh, neat uh, codes that you have to use to uh, get the partitioning done. Uh, you can use, uh, you can find them for example on Yeah, I think the Arch Linux uh, wiki has uh, nice pages about the partitioning, so the codes are there. Uh, there's uh, nice uh, Wikipedia pages on that. And uh, you, you just need to know what you actually want to uh, have partitioned. Uh, before we start, uh, we will uh, create a folder and that will be our root. Uh, we will install the new system inside the root. Uh, before an installation, we should mount inside the uh, proc uh, citizen dev folders uh, or directories because uh, many installation scripts rely on what's inside them. And uh, uh, there, were, there was a bug. Uh, I think it, it is resolved now. It's about a few weeks or a month that you have to check the uh, Selenux uh, context on the uh, mounted folders. Uh, also, uh, what I'm using is uh, calling DNF with uh, some uh, installer root, which is uh, uh, telling the DNF uh, well, install the packages, but install it uh, inside that folder. Uh, take it as uh, your new root. Uh, but the behavior may be tricky because uh, if uh, there is any configuration inside that root, the DNF uh, uh, will use that configuration and it will use that repositories. So, if you are uh, if you have an empty root and you will call uh, DNF install root, it will uh, take a host configurations and repositories because inside true there is, uh, isn't anything yet. Uh, it will install the base packages for example. Then you will call uh, the same command again with different packages to install but now we will find out the uh, behavior is different because uh, the DNF switched to using the configurations in, inside the true root. Uh, you have to uh, create the etcfs type files, for, for example, and uh, preferably 
copy the uh, etc resolve configuration from the running system. Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's the easiest way. Uh, sometimes uh, I even get to uh, situations uh, when I go to the system, but not the kernel installed or the group installed. And uh, if you won't check that uh, the uh, installations, uh, if you won't check that you really have everything installed, you may uh, meet this uh, nice line. So yeah, we are still running here. Uh, uh, I was using uh, the ASAP disk utility to uh, partition the disk and uh, uh, make FS utilities to uh, get the file system on them. Uh, the tricky part is that uh, every MakeFS uh, binary uh, works in a slightly different uh, way and uh, its uh, uh, arguments uh, have uh, different meanings for, for each. And I was using labels to label all of my partitions and uh, I uh, uh, saved these informations to the uh, uh, the, uh, to the fsdev file, so I uh, copied the resulting fsdev uh, file inside that uh, truth system at the end. Uh, what is cool that uh, you can uh, install groups with DNF, uh, for example the gr group install core is cool because it will get you um, mostly everything you need. Uh, you only need to check that uh, kernel and group at the end. Uh, yeah, you usually need to set up uh, the root password and it's uh, tricky because um, the uh, passes over the and uh, change passwords, uh, password uh, utilities aren't uh, working well inside the true root. So uh, right now I uh, used set to uh, insert the hash of the root password to the uh, etc passes with it. Um, I am trying to find out why the uh, utilities uh, doesn't work as I expect, but uh, it may take some time. Uh, also, you need to um, tell the system to relabel uh, all the files uh, upon the first boot. So this is a quick uh, overview, I think that's uh, uh, mostly all I had. Uh, I can show on the device that it will be working, or at, or at least it worked every time I tried that. But it's still installing. So uh, right now, if you have any questions, you can try uh, shooting them at me. Okay. Uh, uh, can you repeat that, please? I mean, I'm not feeling that you're returning to basics. This is how I was looking the rest of the start of the year. It's not the basics. Well, uh, uh, the question was uh, that uh, I'm not re returning to basics, that uh, I'm rediscovering how the Red Hat installer uh, looked uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the question is, uh, how else should it look? I, I tried to uh, minimize uh, everything the Fedora installer did. Uh, at the time, I wasn't able to read a single line of Python, so I, I took a different approach. And I was also curious how to do that. I knew that uh, other uh, distributions uh, are usually installed that way. Okay. I have a question. So, initially, before you started this uh, ultimate installation, what was installed there before that, or 
Uh, yeah, so what's the running system before I in install the Fedora? Uh, the running system is the, uh, well, Fedora. I get it on the getfedora.org. It's the uh, installation images. Uh, I'm just not using the Fedora installer on them. Uh, what problem I was solving? Uh, mostly the Python errors in the uh, Fedora installer. Um, when I first tried to uh, do something on Linux, uh, I had really old hardware like the motherboards from uh, uh, 2000 and so on. And I wasn't able to use Anaconda on any of them. There always be some error, and since I at the time haven't uh, understand Linux nor Python nor anything, uh, I uh, was really blocked by it. And uh, as the <coughs> time went, the number of devices that the Anaconda won't install on were uh, shrinking. But uh, even two or three years back, I still got. Uh, got some hardware at home, and it, it was the purpose for me uh, to get the Fedora running on them. How much time did this exercise took you? So just you said you started with the knowledge of Python, and you wanted to try it. So since you decided to go this way, what time did it take until you had running system? Days, weeks, hours? The question was uh, how long it took me to uh, get it all working. Uh, right now the speed of the installation itself it's about 15 minutes uh, mostly because of the DNF and the packages but the time uh, I was uh, getting the scripts together was uh, about two years probably. I started uh, with uh, reading an interesting um, blog somewhere on the internet to, that was um, uh, named something similar, something like Fedora or scratch, from scratch or uh, something. And it uh, uh, showed me the way that it should work, uh, but uh, it didn't in general. So I started there. I uh, got the um, basic information, what uh, probably is the way I should take. And from them, I, I start learning all the things. And uh, most time I spent doing mostly nothing because I was blocked by the bugs I, I encountered on the way. Uh, the question is if I uh, will go this way. Yeah, exactly. Based on this uh, I'm not sure. I, I, uh, what I would try to uh, get familiar with uh, in the next years is uh, Gentoo, maybe, uh, which have which will have some similar similarities. From what I gathered at the beginning, you're doing a DD of what is an existing image, and then doing DNF update. No, no, no. That, that, using that, to that, that was a joke. Okay. Uh, the, so, the, the, which brings me to the question of why wouldn't you necessarily, why wouldn't you do that? So why wouldn't you take an existing image, DD, and then just reinstall the packages to fix configuration or system architecture issues? Yeah, uh, that was actually a joke I, I got a friend of mine here. Uh, uh, I have the, I had the same uh, talk on the open alt a few months back, and he was asking me what am I actually doing, uh, why I just don't use DD from the existing installations, and that's it. Well, that's a very nice question. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. What is the purpose of this approach versus that? Well, uh, because you could DD a very, very minimal image that is what, on the order of 100 meg or so, and you would have a functional system, and then you can use DNF to, to reinstall packages where you might have object issues. Well, on the other hand, you have to have the image first. I don't know where I would well, take you have it. You have to have the Fordora installer first. So you, I understand the principle behind because uh, until uh, <coughs> five years ago, Anaconda was really bad. Anaconda used to crash underneath the other x86 consistently. 
Um, the Python back then, as you said, was, was really awful. I mean, even today, um, Livet and Livet GUI have their problems, nowhere near as bad as it used to be. So I understand the principle as to why you might want to do it, just it seems like this is a much more complex approach. Okay. So, uh, any other uh, questions here? So, uh, that will be probably all for me. Uh, I hope that uh, you get some interesting information or uh, you uh, find out some, something uh, you didn't know. Uh, yes, the link is here. <laughs>